selected the patient. Cardiac analysis is the application you want to use. Now, when you guys log in yourself, if you do a right mouse click and you pin that application, it'll always be one of your favorites. It'll be right over here on the left-hand side. So you don't have to look through your, you know, all the different applications. So you select your patient, select the application, and select your series. Now, in my case, I have two phases. But if they reconstruct maybe a 60, 65, 70, 75, you can load over 20 phases if you like. So you just select what phase you like. And you click on the bottom where it says open. That will launch this one single phase into the cardiac CT application. The default is to open in this format where you have a sagittal, coronal, an axial image, and then in this fourth viewport, you have the 3D image along with your curved reformat, which I will get into in just a moment. Holding your right mouse down is how you scroll through your data set, you know, if you wanted to just look at a, a few things. If you want any of this um, viewports, these four viewports, if you would like them one-on-one, um, -on -one, you just double click with your left mouse, like click, click, it kind of hides the other viewports, and now you see, and again, I'm using my right mouse to turn this. I'm just going to click, click, and go back down. A few things that I do find uh, useful is sometimes you want to make these like a thicker MIP, you know, so you can kind of see the layout. As you can see, these are, uh, right now, they're five millimeters. On the crosshair, you can just pull it across. See how I can kind of change my thickness over here just by like on the fly. So if you want a thick MIP so you can kind of see maybe where the branches are going, you can just grab. And you can do that on any, you know, any of these viewports. So you can make that thick. If you want to line up a vessel, so let's say this LAD. I put my crosshair with my left mouse on the LAD, grab where my mouse becomes at. See how it became a double arrow? Kind of line it up with the LAD. And since I lined it up with my green, here is the LAD in the green box. I can also rotate. So see, as I rotate this, you see how it can kind of, you can kind of move it. Same thing like the right, you just put your fulcrum right here and I have my blue line. So as I rotate it, you see how you can the... Hi, welcome back. So that's how you can uh, rotate. You can also, if you wanna just follow this vessel, if you move your mouse off of the line, hold your left, Yeah. So if you want to change your thickness, because a default, this was scanned and uh, reconstructed at a 0.5. On any of the crosshairs that have uh, um, little triangles, you just take your left mouse and pull it apart. And you can see in the bottom right here, it'll tell you, you know, what the thickness is. But it's just something to do like on the fly, you know, so you can kind of get like a good lay of the land. Okay. And then so just, you just, and you're dragging it with your left mouse, or correct? I, my left mouse. So when I move my mouse onto the little end of the crosshair there, mm -hmm. I just hold my left mouse down and pull it. Pull it. Okay, great. Now, if you really wanted to, you could click on the word that says 0. .5, and you could type in like a 10 if you wanted like a very specific. But a lot of times, you're just going to go real thick. Oh yeah, I see it, and then make it thin again for your diagnosis. Um, so, I, uh, so again, right mouse to scroll. If, if you kind of have these all turned and all kind of cattywampus, if you do a right mouse click in any box, you can reset. That means it goes back to the sagittal, chronal, and axial. So if you're looking at one of these, 
And I don't know where you joined, but if you uh, move your mouse just out into um, anywhere but the crosshair, your mouse becomes this double box. And that freely lets you just rotate, like if you want to walk a vessel, if that's something that you did. I, I am looking at the right. It's just something you can oblique, freely oblique your data set. The key... Uh, on your main toolbar, this across the top, I hadn't got to that, but this is your left mouse function. So I'll just start the first one, the window level. So if you do need to window level it, you just click on there and then move your left mouse, you know, any way that you need done. The magnifying glass will actually magnify the image. And this is a pan. So if you needed to like recent or something. Right. Yeah. It's actually the left and middle at the same time. And I'll show you where, um, where you can find those shortcuts. Um, just like holding the middle mouse will, or would pan it. And, and your right and left mouse will do the windowing. So, yes, the shortcuts on, on the mouse. Uh, but they're always up here um, as well. Uh, let me just kind of window it. So if you wanted to see maybe this image, this viewport larger, you just double click with your left mouse. Click, click. And it hides those other views. So now we have your 3D image. And you have your curved reformatted image. The thing um, with this curved reformat, if you do use that, that means there's a center line. And you actually can see the red line. So about down here, you can see that it's LAD. The red line is going down the LAD. And this is what that red line is. There is a little lightning bolt and a plus. What that does is kind of just you know, make it a little bit bigger. <clears throat> there is a different layout that I find is more useful than having this layout. And if you come up here, there's three little dots. If you click that twice, in addition to having this 3D image and your curved image, you get what we call this cath image. You can see the cath views here. But what's nice about that, and again, it's all LED because that's what we've chosen, is if you hold your left mouse down, you can kind of rotate this as well so you can kind of get a better view. But if you see, like you see this area with a calcium, if I think, gosh, I want to look at that area, if I just click on that, it brings it so this... This image is always perpendicular to the center of the vessel. So now I can see a transverse image. It's right where this dot is. And it's also where the blue dot is right here. So if I scroll up, up and down just above and below that area, you see that blue dot moving right here. This is a cross section of that vessel right here where the blue box is, with this being one millimeter above and one millimeter below. So that's how you can kind of look at that in a couple different ways. If you know, no, th these are perpendicular to the center of the vessel. So if you want to get your ruler, perhaps you would like to measure the lumen. You just go up to the main toolbar to get a ruler. And you can measure by a left mouse and drag. So if I measured this lumen and it measured 3.0, if I kind of scroll to like a normal vessel and I do a second measurement, you'll notice down here it will do the calculation to notice the percentage of change between my two measurements. And you can see under the LAD, it put down the rollers. 
So then if you want to see your right, you just click on the RCA. So here's your right. You can rotate this so you can see it on the 3D. Oops. John, I thought I should take care of this guy. Top right is a, a undo. And you can also, let me go back to here, rotate it up here. Just take care of it. So you see how I'm kind of just turning it and all of a sudden yeah. I can yeah. open these loops. You got a cute pose and stylus. And then you can go to the circumflex. And you can see that it goes down the circumflex as well. Do you guys use the curved reformats at all? Or do you more look at this type of image or a combination? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do a walkthrough, uh, you know, and uh, uh, get the two short axis view of the Lumen uh, first, and then I use the 3D to just, uh, basically I do the walkthrough, and then I will use the curved MPR at the end to just see all course, you know. Well, so what it sounds like would be a good thing is when you load a patient, you see this box here that says show vessel. What that does is actually just hide those curves. You know, they're still there, and, you know, if you check the box. But that way you have, you can double click in here, you know, get a good feel like where the course of the vessels are. Double click. And then you can double click in your axial as well, you know, to kind of get, you know, a good lay of the land, like you say. But by by unchecking show vessel, you don't have, you know, that in the way. So it gives you a good chance to go through here, you know, go to your vessels. You can make it thicker, mip. And then if you're ready, you just hit show vessel. It will actually keep your axial image here because that's rather than the 3D. But then you'll have, you know, this view so you can walk the vessel. And you also have your curved that you can go, you know, depending on what vessel you want to look at. So that... Yep. 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 Um, so this is a good example because it only will try to find LED right and circumflex on normal anatomy. And, you know, if you have a big D1, it's not going to know, oh, don't do that one. So what you do is actually there's a select tool in the same little box here. So you get your little select finger. And on any image, whatever vessel, and this works if you have a Lima graft or a Saphnis graft, you know, it, is, it doesn't have to be. Um, but let's say I want to look at, I'm just going to make this bigger one so I can see it. Let's just see. So let's say I want to, you know, look at this vessel right here. So I just put that finger right in the middle of the vessel. See how it came up, vessel four? I could do a right mouse click and rename it and name it D1, or I could type in whatever I wanted to. And now I have that curved for, the D, for that vessel that I picked.
you have two choices. So uh, if this was LED, you look at that and say, no, that's really D1. You do a right mouse click and rename it. So I can't name it D1 because it's going to say, hey, you already got a D1. So I'm going to name it D2. Or if you think, gosh, I don't even know what I was talking about, you can also just to delete it. Hit your select tool and select it yourself. So your right mouse click here gives you those options. Um, so delete it, rename it. The only thing is, is it won't let you name it twice. So that's kind of up to you. Um, you usually can hit the select tool and you can choose off the 3D, but sometimes, I mean, this has got like some really big vessels. But if they're small vessels, if you try to do it on the 3D, it won't necessarily do it as well as if you would pick it off the NPR. Because you see how it kind of didn't know what to do. Um, so I'm just going to do a right mouse click and delete it. So I would always just pick it off of here. You know, and that's where that thickness kind of comes in. I'm going to go back to my crosshair. You know, so I could, like on this case, just to kind of see what's going on, you know, you can say, oh, you know, you kind of see all these different, you know, D1, D, you know, you know does it have a ramus, you know, kind of gives you the thickness kind of gives you an idea of, you know, you see that small circ, you know, because a circ, you know, is usually OM1. So it is up to you to make sure it does name them correctly. But that's how you would actually select one if it's not selected. Yeah. Yep. Nope. You go ahead. So, uh, for to change a kernel is done on the raw data on the scanner, but <clears throat> we do have you know the window leveling is uh, using this here, but it won't change it because it's always in a standard kernel. But um, if you want to do, a lot of them do have a special kernel for plaque or for metal stents, but that has to be done on the scanner um, on the raw data. So they could reconstruct it that way and send it over, depending if they have that. Um, yeah, so... Average is um, for if you're using, a, if you don't want a MIP, it's just an NPR. Um, so, yep. So average is when they looks when you have a one by one slice. Um, so if I hit average, you see how it's kind of um, blurry? The average is only used if your slice thickness is one or less. MIP is a intensity projection, which you'll notice no difference when you're at one. But when you get thicker, all the bright structures are what's really uh, projected outwards. So it's really looking at anything with the highest um, Poundsfield units. The other one, well, volume rendered, I hate to kind of get into that. Um, and the color lit, basically, whatever I have my 3D image on, it will change it on my NPR images. So now I'm scrolling through here, but it has the same color as this. So, you know, it brings up a good question, uh, just since you kind of came here. You know, we have this 3D image which is cool, you know, you can look at everything. You'll have these little uh, presets up here. So if you were looking like maybe for anomalous or trying to see, you know, where the takeoff is, if you change it um, and then go back to that uh, color lit, uh, let's see, I think, uh, not so much. Um, 
See how it just has the same color? But anyway, the minip, I wouldn't think you would use that. Minip is using looking at the minimum intensity projection. So it's looking for the ones with the least uh, Hounsfield units. I see it used a lot looking at uh, airways. But I've also seen it used if you're looking, if you're looking at the myocardium. And you're kind of saying, hey, is there really like maybe a small perfusion deficit? Because, you know, they're in the myocardium has some uptake of the contrast. It's kind of like a poor man's per, uh, perfusion. So the minute, if the patient did have, you know, some um, scar or dead tissue, it would be dark. So that's will bring me up. See this little heart? What that little heart does, if you click on it, it'll put them in the two chamber, four chamber, you know, in short axis stack. So if you did want to kind of look at that myocardium in the minip, if there was dead tissue, you know, from a previous MI, it would be darker because there would be no perfusion in it. But it, it, that's like just a, a, a poor man's... Um, perfusion type but that little button will put it right there which is nice because if you get your ruler you know you can always measure as well like if you want to do a measurement or you know something like that you could and if you uncheck the little heart you go right back to your thing so guess this little heart, heart sign only comes if it's a retrospective study or is, will it be there for both retrospective and prospective studies both it's there for both. Because in this one is a prospective because I only have one phase. Um, but if you put your uh, crosshair right here and see if I put my red line, you know, across the valve, red line across the valve, you can kind of see how I'm starting to get, see the sinuses a little bit better. So that's how you can, you know, if you wanted to look at certain structures or do any measurements. Uh, the other ones that are in here are called inverted. So like an inverted MIP, instead of making the dead structures um, bright, it makes them black. It's inverted. And the other one is the inverted MINIP. So if you did see something, in, you know, it's just something you could see. So those are just the inverted of those, those options. Um, now the one thing, you know, since you looked at, I have something called a filter. I'm not sure if you have that, so I didn't want to go into this, but it is a denoising filter. So you asked about different, uh, um, kernels. If you can't change the kernels and you have this option, there is a way to change it from sharp, you know, to help look inside those stents a little bit better. But I don't know if your site has that, so... Um, it's just yeah yeah and I don't know yeah so it would be right here if you have it and you see your options you just check it and it'll go from there the other way um, you know if you are looking at a stent and this patient doesn't have one but if I hold my crosshair down uh, let me get to a vessel if I hold my crosshair down you see my Hounsfield units so if you do have a stent you know if there's you know soft plaque measures what about like 60 or 70 Hounsfield units so you can also just hold your left mouse down and go through a stent if you want to look and see what the Hounsfield units are as well, if you're looking for instent. Because this is based on voxel. So it's a very small, you know, uh, where the crosshairs intersect. So that's also a good way, you know, if you're looking, hey, is this soft plaque or, or not, you can easily use your crosshairs as well. And um, the one thing I did want to show you, I'm going to turn off the show vessel. So I kind of flipped through a couple different one of these. 
There is one I did want to show you. And if you click on the little arrow, it's called AngioSim. So what AngioSim does, and I'm just going to double click so this makes it bigger. If you look at this image, you see the contrast in the left uh, atrium and left ventricle. What that AngioSim preset does, it takes about a minute. It will remove the contrast out of the chambers. So if you happen to have contrast in your right chamber as well, and the only thing that is left is an image of the heart with the contrast in all the vessels. It's at 95%. Let's just give it a second here. <laughs> so you see how it kind of took that those chambers out of there and kind of gives you another overall picture of the heart. Or, you know, if you like the MIP, you can do that as well. Or you just go back to your original. If you're looking down here, if I go to heart chambers and use my windowing tool, see how you can look inside? So that's just picking one of these renderings and windowing out the contrast till I can see inside. And if you want your curves, you just click that there. So if you like your axial image, and I'm doing a right mouse click to reset it, just double click here. You can have your axial image. You can have this um, calf view that you can rotate, your transverse images and your curves. And you can rotate this curve by using this little slider at the bottom. All and all the above. Um, I, I actually deleted the LAD, so let me re. Uh, I'm just going to get my select tool and select the vessel again. So, just looking at this area right up here. So, we have a couple different ways. Um, underneath that select tool, if you want to uh, turn lumen on, you'll notice that it'll give a cross section. The first one is the area, and then it gives you the min and max diameter. So as I use my middle mouse to kind of scroll up the vessel, you can see that it updates the area along with the min and max diameter. Um, we do have a tool that could kind of measure stenosis for you, and it's called single. So you notice all your tools are right under the special analysis. What the single tool does is you come over to your curved image, left mouse hold down and drag it down your area of interest, like I just covered this part of the vessel. You see, I don't know, you see those little pink... Um, arrows. This is a cross section of that lumen. So it's saying between this point A and point B that I chose, which I could move it, that's the narrowest. And then I would just grab my reference line and put it like what I would like it compared to, like this is normal vessel. So here's the green. So you got the area the min and max diameter of the vessel where the green um, reference is. And then you got the area along with the min and max where the pink, the narrowest is. 
and it will calculate the area and bidimensional stenosis for you. If you uncheck, I'll say if you uncheck lumen, it just hides it. So it's kind of an on off type uh, deal. Yep, you just can uh, click on the sun or hold your right and left mouse down, either one, and left mouse just, yep. So you can do that at any, any point. The one thing I did want to show you, too, so I'm going to pick this other case. So this is a retrospective study. So, um, whoops, wrong one. So this one has 10 phases. So I'm going to select all the 10 phases for cardiac artery analysis. I just want to show you how you can go through the different phases. So it's going to load up all 10 of those phases. And they're all up here in this main toolbar. See, it says 0, 10%, 20, 30, 40, 50%. It's still loading, so I'm going to give it just a moment. But you can uh, click on the phase you like, or like the keyboard shortcut is F9 and F10. So, um, oh, all done. So let me, I'm just going to go, so here's 70%. Oh. Let me close that for just a minute. I'm just wondering why I didn't do what I wanted to do. The other way, if you use Vitri in the past, and I just want to look at something, so I'm going to show you. We have something called the gallery. If, you, if you're not sure about the applications, if you go into the gallery. Cardiac arteries. And here's a list of all the applications. See, this is a function study I'm trying to load, so I'm trying to fake it. I just wanted to show you the different phases are up here. You sure can. Every little box has a little play button. So, you know, a lot of times I would click on my heart so I can kind of get it more, you know, into this, you know, this type of view. And you just hit play. Right below it is a little speed button. So if you would like it to go, you know, slower or faster. When you hit play it comes up automatically. And if you don't want your 3D moving, you know. You just... Yep, just holding my right, right mouse down. Yeah, so you can, you know, because this is, you know, normal anatomy. But, you know, if you need to adjust your short axis because maybe the anatomy is a little off, you can always just change your red line. Um, but that's what the little heart does its best to get a two-chamber, four-chamber short axis stack. But, yeah, you can still go through it. And then, you know. Yes, yeah. if you want to do the function and actually get the functional uh, information, there's an application called cardiac functional analysis. <laughs> and you would use that versus 
the um, this is for coronary analysis. This is for function. So you have to have that retrospective study that has in systolic and in diastolic. So if you look at cardiac function, once it loads, it will tell you which phase is in systole, which phase is in diastole. It'll give you the ejection fraction stroke while you find cardiac output. Uh, it will give you all the information just when you load it. So you can see here we have a little graph because it is function and it has my 10 phases here. So it's going to calculate looking at the LV. Right here it says 0% is end diastole. 40% is what the computer feels is in systole. If you agree with that and you look like the left ventricle is included, you know, it's not including too much of the left atrium, your information is right here already. So it gives you your EF, your end diastolic volume, your end systolic volume, your stroke volume, and your cardiac <laughs> output. Yeah, because sometimes, you know, based on patient, you know, it may not be perfect. This is how you do it. There's literally one button that says LV axis. If I turn that on, you see how it's got my yellow line? So if I feel like it should be higher, I just move it higher. But why I'm moving this, look at your short axis stack. So it kind of gives you a good idea like, hey, this is where I would like it to be. So once you change it, I'm just going to make it a little bit higher. You have to see how the compute button is now yellow. Now it's going to recompute, so I'll add that extra in that I just told it that it needed to. And do a recalculation for me. See how it dropped it by three? But you really only need to do it on the two phases, so you just have to check end diastole and end systole. Um, if you wanted to check the short axis, see how it's got the contours as well? But, you know, if you want to say, oh, you know, I really needed to include this, you can make any changes. It will interpolate every few, so you don't have to do every one. And then you recompute it. So really on the function, yep, that's it. So these are really your only two edits. The one is for your mitral valve plane um, location, and the other is just to make sure your um, endo and epi contours are what you want. And you notice that does automatically um, take out the papillaries. So that is, um, and you still have, you know, the play button, you know, so you still have that play button, you know, here, you know, we literally keep it everywhere. Um, and you still have your ruler tool. So if you did want to do, you know, maybe uh, any measurements, you can. As every application has that toolbar, so you can window it, you know, your crosshairs come back. Um, then when you're all finished, it will, it, it will actually as well, if I change my layout, so these red buttons are, you know, how this is laid out. There's one with a circle, and it will do the segment for you, like your 16-segment model, if you do want to look at wall motion or wall thickness based on a 16-segment model. And that's just given to you from changing the layout. Just loading it in, you just change it. You can get that information as well. Uh, just a way to double check. Yep, let me... Uh, who wants to um, take control? Let's see. Over here. Nate Ritter and Ritter. Okay, I'm going to grant you control. So go ahead and click on, I know there's one called cardiac myoperfusion. 
Uh, so Car just select that and then just select one of those. Yeah, there we go. I actually haven't seen. So you can see on the left hand side has picked our three vessels. Um, if you want to uncheck show vessel because you want to look at the 3D first, you can just uncheck that little box. Oh, God. You should be able to enlarge your screen a little bit so you could, should fill your whole screen up. Okay, where's show vessel? Right on the right hand, left hand side. Mm hmm. Down just a little bit. It's a blue chip right to the right. Vessel tool there is okay. So see how it kind of hid that curve. So now if you want to see your 3D image big, right. you just click, click. Or if you want your axial, you know, right mouse turns it. Okay. And yeah, I mean, the kind of small vessels there, yeah. Yeah, I don't think this was really for coronaries, but so do click, click and go back down. And if you want to look at your axial image, you could just click, click and make that bigger. Your right mouse will scroll fast, your middle mouse will scroll slow, you know, so. And if you want it thicker, you can just. Uh, right. I'm just trying to get that. That's that guy, right? Yeah. yeah. Okie dokie. Um, yeah, I mean, basically, I just do the axial images and the the MPRs are for the chart to look good. Yeah. But do you ever I save do. any images or send anything back to the PAC system? Uh, that would certainly be nice. I don't know if, what, what our workflow is going to be there. Because the one thing I didn't talk about, um, you see the camera, camera. If mm -hmm. you saw, let's say you saw something here and you wanted to save it to send to a pack system or save it as a JPEG, you just click on the camera. It will save it in a results file. So you can do whatever you like. So if you click on that camera, one of those cameras, I'll show you where that'll live later. Yep. So that's how you uh, save an image. You know, so if there's something you wanted to show somebody or. Um, and where does that go? Where would I look at that? So go at the top of your page. You see the word study list? Yep. Click on that. That's the original study list, right? Mm -hmm. In the middle of the page where the applications live, right next to it is a tab called results. Mm -hmm. uh, Somewhere over uh, here? Nope, let go left. You see where it says cardiac analysis? Uh, multi chamber? No. I nope. see. Yeah, okay, yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, I Here's, see this, these guys here. Nope. It's see the word result. Let me have control. See the word results. Okay, right okay, there? yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, gotcha. There's that picture you took. So it's really like another tab. Uh -huh. So the applications tab is where you find like the application you want to load. Uh -huh. Any of those single pictures that you take or live, go back to that results tab. So if you right click on that image, you can save as, meaning save as a JPEG. Uh -huh. Export. Yeah I, mean, we, we, yeah, I can see that like that would be handy to, you know, whatever, show a patient or give to them. Uh, to, like yeah, that. put on your desktop. Uh, Export will send it to the radiology PAC system. Um, if you have your own PAC system, you know, that can be loaded in as well. Great. So I, I believe, so then Dave, if we export those, then they'll go, they'll be in the study and could be looked at in the future, whoever accesses the study. Is that correct? Yeah. Yes. So when you open the export page, there will be your PAC system. Usually it's a radiology PAC system. Um, if you have a separate cardiology PAC system, but it will go into that jacket of the patient. So it will be there forever. Because PAC is forever. Because um, it, it knows that DICOM tag. So these images, when you hit export, 
export it as a DICOM image so it can be looked at on a PAC system. And I mean, I don't have any destinations because I don't have any PACs on my computer, but I'm sure you guys have quite a few. Some people have like a research PACs, a radiology PACs, or your cardiology packs, you know, they just have different IP addresses in there. Yeah, so that's how it works, Gabe. Um, for example, for uh, PAX Kyrgyz, so we take the pictures and then export it to PAX. But when you ex uh, click on the export option, it will list you, I think, four or five different options, like CareStream is there, PAX is there. I don't know if Unity uses another radiology kind of platform. Uh, so those options will be there. The one question I have for Ranga is, Ranga, if we want to save an image, say, for example, in the LAO, Turkey, Cranny, Twinkie, how do we do that? Is there like, a, I know I have used the other um, software in the past, and they have that option? Yeah. So we do have some options. Um, so like right here, you see how this one has LAA4, Cranial. There is quite a few right here. If you're looking to do that. So can these be customized or is it just like whatever options are there? Only what options are there. Um, but uh, let me, I'm not sure if you were here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, double click. Uh, let me turn this back on. Um, and I like to uh, click on this three dots here. So right now, like this is a freehand one. So you can see as I move it, but unfortunately you can't type in, um, like if I click, see how it changed both this one and this one to this LAO0 Cranio 35? Those are the only ones we have. So you would have to pick one of these or just move it yourself. Okay, thank you. And if you, like, if you saw, uh, you know, you saw something here and you wanted to save, like, this whole page, if you just click on the camera, it saves this whole page back on the study list under the results. It will have the date, time, and whoever saved it. <laughs> so you can save as, you know, like to put it, you know, wherever you want it on your computer. The right mouse click export will send it to the PAC system, which is permanently archived. Because if you don't, it'll eventually drop off of your system. This is not permanent storage. Uh, Rhonda, I have a question. So your data sets are lovely. Uh, I think we are using a 64 slice scanner. So yeah. I imagine we'll have a fair bit of step artifact and whatnot. Does the software correct for that automatically or is there anything going on with um, that? Any, no, our software won't correct for it. A lot of software on the scanner will correct for it. But that's why if you have this layout, if you see that step artifact, you know, going right through their study, and again, let me just, uh, I like having my axial image down here because that's, um, uh, you'll see that step artifact, but it gives you a couple different views to say, yes, that's a step artifact, but there's no way to correct for that. I mean, that's just, because it's okay, too, usually two heartbeats. Sure. So, so we have, say, um, at RGH, they also have like an AWD, um, Gavik, you have heard about that from, uh, Jenny. So what that um, AWG software does, it, it just um, say, for example, you acquired a prospect of SCG like 75 and there was like 8% 8, 8 pegging on both sides. So it will take your, uh, say, 68 to 82% phases and then try to smooth, take out the best um, mm -hmm. phases for each uh, of those acquisitions and try to smooth those artifacts. But that can be done only on, on that software. It can't be done on the Victria. Yeah. I don't know how it's going to be a Unikey. I'm sure something similar will be available. But they can smooth out some of those gap artifacts. Okay, okay thanks, Nyla. Um, go ahead and take control, Beth. If you want, click around. All you have to do is do a right click. And
So that just changes how the 3D image looks. Um, Forward and backwards, there we go. And then, you know, you can uh, hold your middle wheel down to center it if you want. Yeah. Yep. Huh. Just hold. Yeah, you see up in the main toolbar, you see the four little blue squares. And just click in the heart anywhere like uh, uh, in your NPR images, uh, left click. Uh, nope, just click. Or do a right mouse click and hit reset by NPRs. That's probably the best. because That's nice, nice. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you want to keep your crosshair in the heart. See how your crosshair is kind of Look on your sagittal image. See how it's, yeah, it's like no good. Image. Yeah. So just move it. You know. There you go. <laughs> so like if you wanted to see this aortic uh, valve, you just rotate that. Yep, and rotate your red line so it goes through the valve. So move your mouse till you um, get a double arrow along that red line. See there you go. And. That sagittal image on your left and make sure the red line is going through the valve as well, which looks like it's doing a pretty good job. And now that bottom image on the right is the result. So now see how you got a nice view of your sinuses? Lovely. And you can see the red line moving in the other two views as you're scrolling. Sure. So you kind of have an idea where you are. Have what? Yep. Um, I don't know if you guys spot it or not. I don't know the answer to that unless you look at your vitreo and tell me. We have work software, I'm sorry? Ever. We do. Then yes, you do. 